Dynacab is here. In case you haven't heard, Fractal completely redid the cab block. Now, before you start freaking out, let me say that the old cab block is still there. It is unaffected. None of your presets have been touched. You're still good to go. But this new stuff is definitely gonna get your attention. Let's take a look. AxeFX3 firmware 22.00 public beta, beta 6, was released this past Sunday, and the updated Axe Edit was released on Monday. I installed everything per Fractal's instructions and had no issues. One of the things to keep in mind is that this is not the final version. Cliff said that there are another 12 or so cabs that they want to add. Plus, I'm guessing there will be other revisions as well. This is the first statement in the firmware notes. Warning! Dynacab data will change for the final release version and any presets you create with this public beta may need to be manually edited to correct shifts in the location of the cabinets. If you're not comfortable with this caveat, do not install this firmware. So right now all we're doing is basically testing it out, but that hasn't stopped folks from posting presets using Dynacab in the cab block. I'm going to use a factory preset to demo this. Number 9, the Plexi 100 watt. Now this is one of those times where the looper block can be very handy. You can record a riff, loop it, then put your guitar down and concentrate on using Dynacab. That loop will play over and over, leaving your hands free to make adjustments. If you look at this preset, it's not quite so simple to just add the looper block. If you simply wanted to insert it at the beginning of the chain, you'd have to add send and return blocks. That's not difficult, but what I did in this case was I just replaced the wah block with the looper block. I'm not going to be saving my changes, so I won't overwrite anything. Now we'll switch to the cab block. Everything looks the same. It's using Legacy number 61, a 4x12 Fractal V30 AT4047. Ah, but if you look underneath the channel section, there's a new type drop-down menu. Right now it says Legacy. If you click on it, you see that there's an option for Dynacab. Click on it, and if you did the installation correctly, you'll see a new layout for the cab block. No more pig nose default, guys. Now it's a 1x10 blackface Prince tone. The blue dot represents the mic location. Currently, it's right up against the grill, pointing away at the center of the dust cap. The position parameter moves the mic away from the center to the outer edge of the speaker. The distance parameter moves the mic away from the grill, up to a distance of 24 centimeters. That's just a bit shy of 9.5 inches. Now, so far, these are the only parameters for the mic. Since this is a beta release, there might be more changes before we get to the production release. If we look at the drop-down menu for cab type, we get a listing of 25 cabs, ranging from the 1x10 Blackface Princeton to the 4x12 USA Mic 90. There are three choices for mic type, condenser, dynamic, and ribbon, and condenser is the default. I'm guessing that the dynamic is an SM57 and the ribbon is a Royer 121, but the condenser type is unknown. Now, for some of you guys, this may be a reunion of sorts. You've either mic'd cabs in the past, or you've used virtual mics in other apps. So this stuff should be just like riding a bicycle. We'll see how that plays out. You others have never mic'd a cab before, either on stage or in the studio. So this is all very new to you. But I'm guessing that you'll catch on quickly, and I can pretty much guarantee that it's a lot easier than trying to sort through the over 2,000 IRs that come with the Fractal Modelers. Like anything else involving guitar, you need to practice. And it is way easier than what I had to do in the studio. Place the mic or mics, record a riff, listen back, make adjustments to the mic locations, and repeat over and over again. If you were doing this all by yourself, it could take the better part of a day to find mic placement that sounded right. We've got the looper to make a riff for us, and we can play with mic placement without having to move any mic stands. I don't know that I've ever used a condenser mic on a guitar cab, but I'm going to sure be trying it out now. But usually what I did was put a Shure SM57 just touching the grill and maybe a quarter to a third of the way to the edge of the speaker. Then I put an AEA R84 ribbon mic maybe four to six inches from the grill. Then it was that work of moving the mics to find the sweet spot. Now one thing that I found while testing Dynacab. Mute, solo, pan, and level parameters for each of the four cabs are shared between Legacy and Dynacab on a per-channel basis. The easiest way around this is to use a different channel on the Dynacab side, if possible. That way, the settings for each side of the cab block remain unchanged. I'm going with Legacy on A, Dynacab on B. The 4x12 1960 TV seems to be the right cab for this amp. I'm going to put one in cab 1 and another in cab 2. 
In cab one, we'll use the dynamic mic, and in cab two, we'll use the ribbon mic. They'll be panned slightly so that you can hear the difference. Now here's where it's all up to your personal preferences. You pick your mics, then you move the virtual mic or mics around until they sound good. If you're using two or more cabs, you should check the alignment tab to make sure everything is lined up correctly. Then you should save your preset and you might want to save the cab block in your library for use in other presets. Let's go to the looper block where I've recorded a riff and trimmed it up. Now let's press play. <laughs> One of the things that can be a real ear opener is switching back and forth between Legacy and Dynacab. I was surprised at how congested the Legacy side sounded. <laughs> okay, that was the Dynacab side. Now here's the Legacy side. See what I mean? Now, I'm not sure that I have things dialed in quite right, but to me, Dynacab sounds a lot better than the Legacy IRs. Now, please keep in mind that this is just a beta version and it's, you know, it's good for just testing right now. Get used to how it works, and then when the final production version comes on, you'll be ready to use it. And of course, I will let you know when that happens. Now, you do not want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, have a great day and I will talk to you again soon.